I gotta prove to the people that you can turn anything, and I, I do mean anything, into a t-shirt design and make it look great. I swear. Let me explain. Where do people come up with good ideas for t-shirts anyway? from objects, random things, available at backslashstreetwear.com. Here is a picture of a piece of pie, right? I generated it with AI. That that was not supposed to be a wrap. You know, if we take it, we cut it out, put it against a blank background, maybe a black shirt, add some text. I decided to put berry behind it because I did not know what flavor this was supposed to be. And after like 20 minutes of looking for a font, eventually I decided to call it mixed berry. It was supposed to be blueberry, but the generation did not uh, turn out the way I planned. Eventually, we get a cool looking t-shirt design, except I actually decided I hated this one. I, I didn't like the way it was turning out and I decided to scrap that and redo the whole thing. I'm not proving my point well yet, but I promise there will be three of these. So this time I decided to be more specific with my pie generations and I made sure that it was a blueberry pie. This is the image I ended up coming up with. I thought it looked pretty good. I saw the vision for how it could be an awesome t-shirt and I took it from there. With this one, I started off pretty similarly, but I wanted to take a different approach to it. I start off by putting some blueberry text behind it. I use a different font. I want the text to be tall and big and stretch as much of the print area as we can, which that print area is going to be 15 by 17. That's 15 width by 17 inches, just so you can get a visual. The font I used was Coolvetica Crammed which I thought looked good and I put it behind the pie after I cut it out because wh where else where else would I put it? I mean, it only looks good there. I wanted to add like a warp to it, so I added this weird sort of like bulge, but I like inverted the bulge. It sounds so weird to say, but I ended up sort of angling it on like an incline so it was wider on the left and like went upwards on the right, which will come in later and make more sense. Originally, I was going to try to kind of like keep the pie fully colored and just kind of go with it there, but honestly, I wanted to kind of make that black and white and then reveal the like actual blue color to pop out in a different way. So I added this sort of threshold effect to it, which is pretty common in Photoshop. Ended up leaving just the white areas. I wanted to contrast the blocky text with a sort of script typeface. So I used this font. It was called Alexana, if that's how you pronounce it. And this is what I meant by adding a sort of like subtlety of the blue tones while keeping the original pie black and white. But even there, I didn't think it was enough. So I added this sort of stripe ribbon shaped thing that would have a more bold element of the blue going across the entire design to prove it as like being more prominent. It would be bright and take up more space than the text alone. The designs will get more complex as we go on, but I still masked the text so that it gave the shape of the shadow of the pie so that it looked like the pie was still there. Even though in the actual print, that part of the pie would just end up being the shirt the black shirt color, which is like what, what you want to do with prints like these. You don't want to be adding extra black ink onto a black shirt unless it, you need to. And most of the times you, you don't, trust me. But I really like how it turned out. It's simple and clean and on to the next one. So actually this randomizer was supposed to pick what kind of objects or things we we're making designs of today, except for the first iteration of this video, I decided to be biased and just pick random things that I had already written down or thought of or, or things that were around the house. For the next episodes of this, suggest something in the comments and I will add it to my randomizer and we could come up with some crazy, crazy ideas. So yeah. This next one, I really wanted to make it an around the house type of thing. So I went and found this jug. It's actually supposed to be a beer jug, but for the sake of this video, <laughs> I am going to call it a milk jug. I took some photos of it and I cut them out in Photoshop, put them against a white background, and then I put those into an AI generator to make it a better looking jug, if that makes sense. I didn't like my reflection in this one, and so I thought I would just like tune it up, you know? And here's what we ended up with. I wanted to do a sort of 50s, 1950s diner feeling with this one. Um, with that, I decided to start by putting a checkerboard pattern over it. I thought that would fit 
like the glass. But that, yeah, that didn't do too well. It wasn't how I expected. But in that process, I accidentally misplaced the checkerboard behind the glass. And miraculously, I was like, wow, that that is it. That is exactly what I was looking for. And uh, we went from there. I was looking for the right font to use and I came across this one. It's called Old Guard. I thought it kind of fit that 50s vibe I was going for. Well, also just the way the letters were and how much space they took up on the canvas, I could easily stack two words. That's why I ended up picking the words milk jug instead of just jug because it just, it looked better. It, that's that's the main reason, it, it looked better. I decided to do some shadowing there with the dissolve blend mode. So I would take a soft brush and it would it creates this sort of grain effect that's different than your typical grain, but it still comes up well in print. I still didn't think that was enough though. Uh, the black and white just wasn't totally doing it for me. Needed, needed some more color in there. I was thinking uh, a green, like a pistachio tone, and that ended up working out perfectly. I just typed in jug again in a different font that fit that 1950s style, kind of like a logo or a neon sign. I, I got lucky because it looked good. You know, I flipped it on its side and stretched it across behind everything else in the image. And that is what seemed to add that extra layer of complexity to it that just was perfect. But it didn't take away from the original black and white color scheme. I decided to add a few little stars to it uh, to kind of make it feel more finished. You know, those simple shapes can add just a little of that extra detail that you might want. I thought maybe red would be the move there with the stars, but uh, clearly that was not the case. I, I thought that that was a bit too much, so I stuck with the black, white, and the pistachio. I kept blending things more and more in the image with the dissolve blend mode and the soft brush to kind of keep that grain all around. It seemed to add like a few more elements to the design that I liked. But to really finish the aesthetic, uh, we need to make everything look older. The photograph of the jug still looks like a photograph of the jug, even though I took it on my phone. Like it's it's not a good photo. So I went to the filter gallery. I used this option called reticulation. Um, I've never heard that word said out loud in my life once ever. So hopefully I'm saying it right. It's a different sort of grain effect. I feel like it adds more realism to like the the graininess of the photograph kind of got lucky there and it it seemed to look good so it fit the style well so i went and added that effect to all the different details in black on the design and here was our finished look i mean i thought it looked finished i thought it looked perfect these shirts will be available on my website after this so if you like these i mean go right ahead backslash streetwear.com They'll be under the YouTube section because I kind of want to separate this from my other stuff, but it turned out perfect, honestly, so I'm happy. We tend to have some forest wanderers around here, so I thought we could base the last one on them because they deserve it with the potential to be a good joke. I cut them all out individually in Photoshop so that we could move them around like independently. I hadn't figured out what shirt color we should use for the deer, but after testing a few, I thought that the medium brown would probably fit them the best. It's one of my favorite blanks to use. So what I did is I started to gradient map and use that color to match some of their tones to the exact color of the shirt. I wanted some of that background grass to be part of the design as well. Once I gradient mapped it, it kind of looked like snow, which I thought was a great like addition. I feel like that would be perfect in a t-shirt design. Using the dissolve blend mode again and soft brushing it, there's that grainy aspect that, like I said before, still shows up well on the actual print. Like the previous shirts we made, I wanted to keep that sort of image identifier definition type of shirt where the word is across the top and the actual design is like representing what the word means. So I wrote deer um, and I was still using that old guard font from before and it just, it just didn't lay right right on there but i knew like if we messed around a bit it would look better so i added just like white tailed because i mean they are white tailed deer i thought that this font and the way i laid out the letters it had like sort of a freehand feeling to it whereas the actual image kind of comes off as like painting 
style, which was pretty unique. There was too much empty space over on this side, so I thought I'd add like a little extra text. I put, will eat corn, seeds, plants, because I mean, they will, like I feed them every day. Just trying to educate the people. Thinking of different things to like grab and throw in there, I found this image of a lighthouse. I wanted to incorporate it in some way, and I spent a long time messing around with that. I, I struggled. At this point, I knew we needed some sort of like accent color. And the only thing I could think of that would go well with this besides the brown, black, and white was like a Christmassy red tone. Might have been a mistake at first, but I feel like it shaped up better. I also brought in this image of the mountains to match with the background, fill up more of that area. I think it looked really good. I wanted to add more of that red tone, but I didn't know how to do it without making it look gory and like there was blood because that was not what I was intending. I promise the red's not supposed to look like blood. Like, I swear. I even threw their government name in there. It ended up looking good on a few different colors of shirts, but I still went with the medium brown. Now I just need some footage of me wearing the shirt, walking out to feed them, and I need someone to get that on camera. Did I prove my point enough here that anything could be a cool looking t-shirt? I hope you were entertained. Thank you for watching and good night.